counting double digit thousands. <laughs> Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video by 123Toyd. In this video, I'm going to show you how to import both FRD and ZMA files into Passive Crossover Designer by Jeff Bagby. This is a great program that allows you to create crossovers from scratch with any speakers that you want. Now having said that, this is a free to use program, free to download. Uh, as long as you're using it for DIY purposes. If you are using this to create for commercial use or to resell, you do need to contact Jeff Bagby before you actually use this program. Now, with that being said, let's get started and show you how to do this. There are three ways to import FRD and ZMA files, or actually to attain FRD and ZMA files. Uh, at least there's three ways that we're going to talk about. They all three involve the internet and they involve Parts Express web page. Now I'm going to go from easiest to hardest. The easiest thing to do is to pick a Dayton speaker from Parts Express. Uh, the reason why I say pick a Dayton speaker, and there might be others, but Dayton almost always has this on its website or on Parts Express website. It'll have a warranty, the specifications, and then it will say data files. Now this is the ND20FA6 tweeter and so let's just click on this data file and see what happens all right it downloaded something for us i'm going to show it in the folder and before i extract it what i always tell people to do is create a new folder and name it that speaker so this is the nd20 fa-6 um, and throw the zip file in there and there's a reason why we're going to do that uh, you don't have to do that it's just something i do I extract all the fires, files here, and when I do, um, it gives me all these different um, files, graph, readme, text. If you were to just go ahead, if you um, just went ahead and extracted it where you downloaded that, and then you downloaded another file and another file and kept extracting them, then you would have a bunch of files in the FRD and ZMAs, and um, it would be kind of a pain. So... It's that simple to get the FRD and ZMA files for Dayton, except if you download a woofer. And here's why. If you go to a Dayton woofer, and um, let's look up the Dayton 105-8. Uh, it's not going to find it. Uh, let's just do this. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull up a Dayton Audio 4-inch woofer, and, and I'm going to show you why the Dayton's a little bit different. If any of you guys have had errors, um, sticking this in, I'll just show you the 105-4. doesn't matter. We'll download the graphs, and we're going to do the exact same thing I just did. We're going to create a new folder, Dayton 105-4, and throw this in here. And here is why... I'm going to show you this. Um, in order to get these files in here, what you do is you load load it. So we'll go to my um, downloads. We'll put in that tweeter, which is FRD is in here. We always select zero. We never select anything else. Open it up. And we're going to load uh, the ZMA file on there as well. And now I'm going to show you what's going to happen with the woofer. Now, when we load this woofer file, it's not going to go in. So typically, it creates a graph right away. Now, if we look at our graph, this is what it looks like. Now, watch. The graph's not going to change. Ah, see, uh, well, it changed, but not, not in a good way. Uh, I'm pretty sure your woofer does not have a zero response all the way down to there. Um, and I know that for a fact. So here's what you do. When you go and download a woofer especially, and, or any speaker that's not loading properly, go to your FRD file and open it up with Notepad. And if you see, there's a bunch of writing here. Delete that. Uh, also check at the bottom if there's any writing down there. If there is, delete it. Just keep these numbers and then resave it. Now when you import it, it'll import correctly. Let's go ahead and import that now. Say OK. And now you have it imported correctly. 
uh, there's a reason why uh, that is. That's because that writing always delete that. So if it's not importing correctly, that's why. And that's the easiest way to do it. Now here's the second easiest way. Um, we're going to go ahead and look at the HiVi B4N on Parts Express. This is a famous speaker that a lot of people use because it's very low priced and has a very good sound. Uh, now they have the exported Clio frequency response. Now the frequency response is the FRD and the impedance is what we call the ZMA. So if we look at the frequency response, what we want to do is copy everything except for the words and just copy that. And we're going to open up Notepad and we're just going to paste everything in Notepad and we're going to save this. And I'm going to save it as uh, B4N dot FRD because this is the frequency response. If you do not put dot FRD, it will not work. So you do have to save it as dot FRD. And that's just telling me that I already have that saved and that's fine. I'll just resave it. Now, same with the impedance. We're going to copy everything. Make sure you don't copy anything past the numbers. It should go to about 20,000. And we will open up Notepad again. And we're going to paste that in there. And we're going to save this as B4N. You know, whatever you want to name it. I, I like to call it B4N.ZMA. That way I know what speaker it is. I'm going to hit save. It's going to ask me to replace it. I am. And that's it. You now have the, the information to import that sweeter, speaker. Now, I wish all of them were this easy. Unfortunately, they are not. And I'll show you on the Dynavox. Now, a lot of the speakers on Parts Express or any other website that you're going to buy speakers, this is the process that you're going to have to do. You're going to need a program called SPL Copy. Now, all the links to these programs are in the description down below. Just check that out. Now, I clicked on the Dynavox uh, for a reason. You're going to want to click on their spec sheet. So open up their spec sheet. If they don't have a spec sheet, you're not going to be able to do this process without having um, equipment to be able to measure this. So you're going to notice that there's graphs here. There's an impedance graph and an SPL graph, which is the frequency response. What we're going to want to do is cut these out into a picture. So you can print screen them. You can, so if you wanted to just load print screen, you could do that. Make sure you get the whole graph, though. Um, what I mean is make sure you get these numbers because you're going to need those uh, and the numbers up above. So I like to zoom in and then I just do a snip tool and I just create a new snip and I save it as uh, this would be um, Dynavox. And this is ZMA. And so we're going to save that file. And we're also going to come over here and we're going to snip again. And we're going to create the FRD file. And so we're going to hit save. We're going to hit Dynavox. Uh, FRD. And we're going to hit save. Now here's what we're going to do now. We're going to hit a, our SPL copy um, and we're going to open that up. Now as soon as we open up SPL copy, we are going to have to choose one of those images. It does need to be an image. It has to either be a JPEG uh, or I think it can also be a PNG file. Uh, I usually just save it as a JPEG. Now I'm going to select the FRD file. If you had them both in one file, you, you can do that as well. Um, but I'm just going to choose FRD to show you how to do this, and I'll also show you on the ZMA. So we're going to hit low frequency, and this is the lowest frequency, and we have to select it. Now, if you look at the graph, it shows that the lowest frequency on this particular graph is 20 hertz, and we're going to select the highest frequency, which is 20 hertz. I'm sorry, 20,000 hertz. And select it. This is a box, so for whatever reason, that's not right. Do that. Also, I've seen the graph go all the way to 40,000 hertz, but no data past 20 hertz. Um, in fact, I'll show you that. That's on a screen right here. This is a Timphony speaker, and this Timphony speaker 
it's really weird. Um, there's actually two things I need to show you on this. Uh, if you're going to do this, see how it goes to 40,000, but nothing actually goes past 20,000. If you're selecting your graphs like 20 and then 20,000, don't select 40,000 because there's no information there. And the other thing I want to show you is with the one I'm tracing, it only has one FRD, which is the on axis. This particular speaker has on axis 30 degree and 60 degree. You're going to want to trace the on axis, which is the red one. Um, and that makes sense when you actually use the program. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to hit low amplitude here, and it's going to ask me what the decibel is. And if you see it's 50 hertz, it's on the left-hand side right here. And so we're going to go 50 decibels. I'm sorry, I said hertz, not decibels. And we're going to select here because there's nothing past 100 decibels. So we're going to select 100 decibels. And we're going to extract the FRD. Now when you do this, it's going to tell you to select the color of the line. So you're going to look for this FR, this line, and you're going to select about as close as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And hopefully, it will trace the whole thing. Now if you notice, see right here it says, hey, I got lost. Well, you're just going to have to um, do a little more. Now, there's a little bit that was off. Um, See these 20,000 hertz, which say like anything past this 92 is basically wrong. So um, actually 91. So it, all this is just off. So we'll delete that later. But we'll save this for now as the FRD file. And we'll save it as um, this is Dynavox. Um, we'll put that in the mid range. Oh. And you can select that and save it. Now, we noticed that it uh, made a mistake as far as um, actually tracing the graph. Now, you saw it at the very end. It, it did a squiggly at the end, and it followed the graph all the way up. We don't need that. Um, and so that's wrong. Now, what you can do is you can retrace it if you want to. Um, you are going to have to delete these on the SPL just like I, we had to on the other one. But the easiest thing to do is just come here and all these that say 20,000 first for are off. Um, and in fact, everything from about 91 was was off. And you're good there. And just resave it. Uh, but what you can do if you really want to be completely exact on everything, what you can do is you can... Go to your options, and you can select the tolerance, and you can select 5%. And that will mean you'll have to do a lot more manual tracing with your um, arrow keys, but uh, you can get a more accurate assessment at the very end. I'm not really worried about from 17,000 to 20,000. If you look, there's not much there. It really doesn't matter. Now, if you want to do the ZMA file, what you're going to do is you're going to graph from a file, you're going to select a new file, um, and I saved that here, and I called it the ZMA. Now ZMA, you need a couple other things. Uh, you need a couple things. You need your low frequency again, which is 20 hertz, so we're going to say OK. You need your high frequency again, which is 20,000 hertz, we're going to say OK. Now you need the impedance. You don't need the amplitude this time. The low impedance is here. And see, it says right on here, ohms. It starts at 0 ohms. And the high impedance starts ends here, which is 55 ohms. So I did not select it right. So let's select 55 ohms and click OK. And you're going to extract the ZMA the same way. Um, I know that this ZMA is a pain to actually uh, trace. You're actually going to have to turn your tolerance down to 5% to get this. And you're going to have to do a lot of manual work. I'm not going to do that right now. But I'll just show you what I mean. Once you start it, it's going to say, oh, it can't find it. Can you lock it back on? And then you'll have to keep locking it back on manually. See, this is where it's at. And you'll just have to keep doing that throughout the program. Um, it, it'll be tedious, but when you're done, you only have to do it once, OK? Uh, and then when you're done, just load the woofer and tweeter in that you want to work with. Uh, we already loaded some in here. 
and name it. And so this particular woofer, we use the Dayton 105-4. Um, you are going to want to put, this is the ND 105-4, you're going to want to put that in here and we'll explain why you want to do that later. And we'll just go to FA-6. Um, and uh, and you're finished. So that's as easy as it is to load ZMA and FRD files. There's not much more to do than that as far as loading it. Now, it can be time consuming, but you can get some great results. Now, go ahead and start doing this on all the speakers that you want to uh, try to model. Trust me, you're going to want a lot of different ones. Some woofers and tweeters just don't really work as well as you wish they would together. Um, and as we go through this, we're going to start talking about uh, where the crossover point should be, um, what the lowest crossover point should be, uh, how do we actually use the rest of the program. And so uh, stay tuned for that. This is just the beginning stages to get you to at least learn how to load and get the files that you need. I don't want you to just stick with all Dayton because it's easy. I want to make sure that you can use the different speakers like the Dynavox and Timphonies. Um, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and uh, I'll have another video out on this program shortly. And as always, remember to subscribe. Thanks. Counting double digit thousand.